You know why in the age of services like Netflix I still buy Blu-rays? One of the reasons are bonus features. I love watching making ofs of movies and listening to audio commentaries. It is great to see what kind of problems had to be solved and questions answered before you could get the content we consume. You can get a whole new appreciation for an art form if you see how it was made and what kind of hell people went through to create it. If you never saw the bonus features for the extended versions of the Lord of the Rings movies, do it. I know of several people who got into the movie business because of that making off. It is the most in-depth and fun making off you can find this side of Heart of Darkness. But why am I talking about movies? If you had the foresight to read the video title, you know that this is about making offs in games. But that's the thing. List some games with interesting making offs that are included in the game. There aren't a lot. Sure, there are some exceptions, like the documentary of Metal Gear Solid 2 that was included with the game, that did a great job of chronicling the game's creation. And there are several games that either include some sort of making off you can unlock in the game, included in some sort of special edition, or use making off type videos in the promotional material. Compare that to DVDs or Blu-rays, where it is common to find at least some kind of making off content on the disc. And while the quality of such content in movies is all over the place, it at least exists. In video games, it is far from the norm to see such content. If you ask people on the street, I'm pretty sure most of them have at least a general idea of what goes into making a movie. I would wager that most people do not know what goes into making a game, even if they play games. You'd think that the industry would want people to know how the most progressive art form in the world is created. If you look at Indie Game the Movie, for example, you can see what kind of work and passion goes into creating games. Well-made making-offs do just that. And even if making-offs in games appear, they often make the mistake of following in Hollywood's footsteps, a problem the game industry is guilty of on multiple accounts. And while there's nothing wrong with staging a making off of a game in the same way you would create a movie making off, there are smarter ways. Look at the developer commentaries in the Half-Life 2 episodes or the Portal games for example. You can walk through multiple parts of the game with the development team explaining their thought process behind creating that content. They even stop the action or show you unique things to further bring certain points about the game design across. That way you learn about games by basically playing them with the developers. How genius is that? And even more importantly, why aren't more people doing that? The only other example I can think of is Republic. I guess a similar way of doing things is the way Metal Gear Solid 4 approached it. While the game had several traditional making offs, it also went one step further. In the game Snake can use an iPod to listen to music. You could download additional songs via the internet. But you could also download developer commentaries that you had to start in certain places in the game to have the developers walk you through and also show you some interesting things in the levels. Not quite as involved as the way Valve did it, but still wholly original and way more interesting than watching a traditional making of. And I actually liked the way Evil Within did it. They hired games journalism legend Adam Sessler to conduct interviews with Shinji Mikami and other team members about the game. That direction is pretty interesting as an outside perspective can ask more thought-provoking questions than the usual stuff that's making offs. While I would have preferred they released making off after the game, so they could actually go in depth and not just use it as advertising, Adam Sessler managed to get to the core of Shinji Mikami's design process, which is exactly what I wish more documentaries did. Outside of instances like this, if you really want in-depth knowledge on game development, you have to attend conferences like DICE, which are great for giving developers an outlet to share their knowledge. But that's the problem, not everyone has access to the DICE presentations. We really don't do anyone any favors by walling off information like that. I guess one of the other problems with many making offs, and why the Lord of the Rings stuff is so interesting, is because many making offs are very superficial. They really just scratch the surface of game development and often come off as incredibly self-congratulatory. Compare that to the Lord of the Rings making off, where something goes wrong at almost every corner and most involved are actually amazed that they managed to get the movies done on time. When you hear stories of how Viggo Mortensen broke his toe or John Rhys Davies was constantly pissed because he hated working in heavy makeup, you see that this is more than a job people are doing. Watching people work is boring. Watching people create art passionately on the other hand is quite interesting. And I just wish more games talked about their fuck ups short concepts that didn't work or even let me play them. As everyone who had access to unfinished games can tell you, games, even more than any other art form, only ever really come together at the end and are often far away from being fun until before the very end of development. And many companies try to hide that fact. Don't hide the fact that every working game that is fun is a goddamn miracle. Games don't start out fun and get progressively worse the more people mess up. They start as ideas, ideas that have to be strong and clear enough to get through all the hard work and come out as finished working and fun games the other end. And we should be allowed to go on that journey with them more often. Knowing more about the way games are developed could also help appreciate an aspect that is often overlooked, but it's probably the most important one. The gameplay design. It's easy to look at good art design, nice graphics and a good story in a game and see how much work went into it. But creating functioning, fun and engaging gameplay systems and mechanics? That's something you don't see. 
That is one of the reasons why the Call of Duty games are very well executed games, even though the art is often bland, the graphics aren't always stellar and the story often predictable. The gameplay loop is so tightly designed that you can't help but have fun, especially in multiplayer. But how did they achieve such good design? How did they calculate the perfect number of shots it takes to kill or get killed? How loud should the weapon be to have the best impact? How fast should the player be able to move? All games are one gigantic equation you have to solve, and that's the part that often gets overlooked. And even in this, Valve's commentaries go one step beyond. The developers of the Half-Life episodes often tell you how they had to rearrange whole parts of certain levels, because they didn't have the right effect. Because players wouldn't look at the things the developers wanted them to look at, for example. The most obviously number-driven games are probably RPGs. Wouldn't it be interesting to see how developers design a difficulty curve around a player who can level up? Or how you distribute red drops in games like that, without making it too grindy? It's questions like that that movie directors don't have to answer. So we focus on the audiovisual presentation of a movie when we look at making offs. And games follow suit, while often ignoring the most interesting part, like gameplay design. The Last of Us documentary has an interesting part. In it, one of the UI designers talks about how they had to redesign the weapon and item menu multiple times to get to the point where it's both easy enough to use in the heat of battle, but complicated enough so it is a risk to do it in battle. And forcing the game's survival theme. So I wish publishers would create more in-depth documentaries made by outside entities, like the Last of Us documentary, include details on things in a game you can't see or hear, and most importantly, use the interactivity of video games to tell you more about the creative process. Let developers speak, and not just to promote your game. I mean, just think of your favorite game. Wouldn't you like to know how the developers designed all the things you love about it? I sure know I do. One of my favorite games, Resident Evil 4, has one of the worst excuses for making off I've ever seen. They only ever talk about what's in the game, never how or why they implemented anything. And Shinji Mikami, the game's director, isn't even in it. At one point someone actually says, Well, I can't tell you about it, you'll have to play the game. And what's the bloody point of a making off? I know what's in the game, I played it. Tell me how and why you did what you did. I just hope more developers will tell us in the future. And then, maybe someday, we'll have a video games documentary that has the same effect on people as the Love of the Rings documentaries.